Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna, most people get a bigger reaction when we say it the first. Okay. Some people well, start anyway, clapping Hakuna immediately. Matata. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're ranking all the live action Disney remakes. Little imposter, <laughs> pretending to be Alice, she should be ashamed. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? You are. Uh... If anyone wants to clap, now is the time to do it. For this list, we'll be looking at all the live-action remakes of Disney films and sorting them from worst to best. While we'll be allowing for loose remakes, we won't be considering direct sequels to the remakes, nor will we be including Mary Poppins Returns as that's a direct sequel. Which remake opened up a whole new world for you? Sing its praises in the comments! Number 16. The Sorcerer's Apprentice a lot of people don't think of this one when Disney remakes come up. Civilians mustn't know magic exists. That would be complicated. Seeing as it's inspired by the Mickey Mouse segment of the same name from the original Fantasia, that's good enough for us. Having said that, good is not exactly an operative word most would use to otherwise describe it. You are insulting me, Dave. Repeatedly. There are things to admire, like an eccentric, but not too eccentric, Nicolas Cage in an era where his choices were less than sound. Are you insane? Little bit. Otherwise, though, The Sorcerer's Apprentice feels far too generic to really enchant the way it wants to. Number 15. The Jungle Book. The first of the Disney remakes, this one is perhaps the most forgotten by fans. With each spoke, a tale to be told. So keep silence along the banks, and I will tell you one of these tales. Also known as Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, the movie purports to stick more closely to the author's original stories, though many critics of the time didn't actually find that to be the case. On the other side of the spectrum, those most familiar with the animated film from 1967 didn't recognize enough similarities to draw interest. Isn't that the same bear you fought? Saving my life. Baloo? Yes, Baloo. Not only do the animal characters not speak, but the bulk of the story takes place many years later when Mowgli is a young man. The film was a slight disappointment at the box office, and would eventually be overshadowed entirely by another adaptation that we'll be discussing in due time. Go! Go with your jungle boy! I got what I came for! I don't need you! Number 14. Dumbo. Of all the classic Disney movies in the vault, Dumbo was low on everyone's list of live-action remakes they wanted to see, especially considering it aged worse than most. While the studio clearly knew which parts to leave out, it didn't feel like it knew which parts to add to make us believe once again that an elephant could fly. You knew he could do this? You should talk to your kids more. With the inclusion of Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, and Danny DeVito, the quasi-Batman Returns reunion tickled our curiosity. However, nowhere was the same level of creativity seen here. Is that a monkey in your desk? Just for emergencies. The actual character of Dumbo was once again easy to sympathize with, not to mention adorable, but otherwise the adventure lacked the kind of je ne sais quoi that would have made it truly show-stopping. This dreamland doesn't deserve it. No circus does. Number 13. The Lion King. We can already hear people saying that this one uses so much CGI that it technically isn't even a live-action film. Is that a challenge? I wouldn't dream of challenging you. They're probably right, but seeing as it was presented as such by Disney and certainly looks the part, we're giving it a pass here. Hakuna Matata. What? Plus, it's not knocking down its very esteemed forerunner, as this version of The Lion King loses a great deal of authenticity and emotionality in its pursuit of photorealism. It also doesn't help that the story adaptation is beat for beat, giving the viewer a been there, done that mentality. I never left you. I never will. Still, if you're satisfied with a largely visual experience, the movie does exemplify some of the best filmmaking technology at Hollywood's disposal today. Number 12. Beauty and the Beast Another remake that tackles Disney royalty, 2017's Beauty and the Beast similarly stuck very close to the source material. Tale as old as time 
pro as it can be. Unlike with The Lion King, however, the transition to live action offers something the animated version didn't. Namely, the charisma of some of its famous cast members as they brought their iconic animated counterparts to life. G-A-S-T I believe there's another T It just occurred to me that I'm illiterate and I've never actually had to spell it out loud before. Unfortunately, the CGI realization of the non-human characters leaves a little something to be desired. And the cartoon versions definitely pull rank here. All in all, the live-action version is a far cry from the original, particularly in terms of vocal talent. I was innocent and certain, now I'm wiser but unsure. But it can still be appreciated as a polished, energetic adventure all the same. Number 11, Mulan. Now here's one that decidedly chose to stray from its animated counterpart. A bold move that changes nothing. The plan continues. While the live action version gets brownie points for trying to adhere closer to the more realistic legend of Mulan, we as Disney fans can't say we didn't feel the absence of fan favorite characters like Mushu. Dishonor, dishonor on your whole family. Make a note of this, dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. Still, we can appreciate the attempt the story made to expand on itself and flesh out the title character. Furthermore, director Nikki Caro does manage to inject some truly stellar visuals into the proceedings, making the filmic transition worth a look, even if the ending wants for more fireworks, both literally and figuratively. Your Imperial Highness, Hua Mulan. Number 10, Alice in Wonderland. This movie standing has had a roller coaster of an evolution. While the visuals and realization of Wonderland were groundbreaking and striking in 2010, the over-reliance on green screen does make more than one scene fall a little flat. Resolve this for us, Absalom. Is she the right Alice? Not hardly. Public opinion quickly dropped after release, but it began to look a whole lot better in comparison to its sequel, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Now over a decade later, we can appreciate it a little more in retrospect. Primarily, it's pitch-perfect yet totally bonkers performance from Helena Bonham Carter as the Red Queen. Open the dead, my family. Oh, please, please don't. No, I have little ones to look after. Go to this house and collect the little ones. I love tadpoles on toast almost as much as I love caviar. Though the Alice in Wonderland from Tim Burton, there's that name again, lacks in the story department, it is thoroughly weird, much like the original. So at least Disney was consistent. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. Number 9, Christopher Robin. Another loose remake, Christopher Robin doesn't lift from one particular Winnie the Pooh story, but because it realizes the residents of the Hundred Acre Wood in live action, we're including it all the same. This can't be happening. Oh, God, it's stress. It's not stress. Come on, it's stressed. It's Pooh. Taking place long after the title character has grown up and forgotten all about his old pals, the film details their return in an effort to recapture his youthful spirit and sense of imagination for the sake of his family. You are our hero. I'm not a hero, Pooh. I'm lost. But I found you, didn't I? Hardly avant-garde storytelling, we know, but the charming nature of the felted friends, particularly Pooh himself, does not miss a beat. Well, I am a bear of very little brain. No, Pooh. You are, I think, a bear of very big heart. We as Disney fans probably didn't need this to exist, but it was a delightful surprise nonetheless. Number 8, Aladdin. This one made us very wary prior to release, especially when we got our first look at Will Smith's genie. I'm talking. To a smoking blue giant? No! I am not a giant. I am a genie. There is a difference. Giants are not real. Though the design was off-putting at first, the Uncanny Valley effect wore off in time. Helpfully, Smith made the role completely his own, rather than trying to replicate Robin Williams' wholly idiosyncratic performance in the animated version. The ever-impressive. The long- 
Often he met it out. But never duplicated. 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 Genie of the Lamp. True, not every character shined in the long run, but Aladdin largely maintained the energy of its songs and helped sweep us off on a magic carpet ride all over again. It also made an effort to expand the role of Princess Jasmine and lend the character a little more dimension than the animated original was given. Number 7. Lady and the Tramp Another remake we weren't exactly clamoring for, Lady and the Tramp proved to be an enjoyable ride in its own right without a whole lot of flaws. Look, I'm not buying the hustle, but I respect the effort. Sure, the lost pet kind of animal adventure did feel familiar, but that's kind of what we liked about it. Every day could be an adventure, you and me, no leashes or fences, no loyalty to anyone. The movie evoked an old school vibe not seen from live action Disney since Homeward Bound. Does the CGI attempt to make the various animals better emote look a little distracting? Maybe. But at 104 minutes, the film gives us plenty of time to get used to it as a talented voice cast does wonders to infuse the characters with plenty of personality. Baby, we're street dogs. We're strays. Some of us are criminals. Allegedly. It's just a shame it got largely underseen during the early days of Disney+. Plus. Number 6. 101 Dalmatians Though not beloved by critics, 1996's 101 Dalmatians has become more and more popular with Disney fans, much of which can be explained in two words. Glenn Close. How marvelous. How marvelous. Close is absolutely magnetic as Cruella de Vil, somehow managing to make an over-the-top Disney villain work in live action without losing an ounce of manic energy. Cruella de Vil has the last laugh! <laughs> <laughs> On the whole, the story does admittedly lose some of its luster, as we do prefer the pups in animated form. However, in an era when Disney was far more focused on their animated works, this was a surprisingly enjoyable diversion. Do you like sports, Frederick? Oh, I don't believe so, madam. I thought we liked Stripes this year. What kind of sycophant are you? It's just a shame that the sequel, predictably titled 102 Dalmatians, couldn't replicate the same winning formula. Number 5. Cruella Maybe there's something about this character in live action that just works. Or maybe we just got another powerhouse performance by the actor playing her, this time courtesy of Emma Stone. Not to be otherwise compared to the previous entry, Cruella seeks out an identity all its own. Whether you have the killer instinct is the big question. I hope I do. It finds one in a meticulously crafted, fast-paced origin story for the wicked villainess. Oh, brilliant. Born bad. And a little bit mad. And yet they also managed to layer in a real sense of humanity and depth with all that stylish idiosynchronicity. Indeed, this version of Cruella de Vil works as an anti-hero revenge tale that takes the best parts of similarly-minded films to create something wholly fresh. I want to make art, arty. And I want to make trouble. You in? I do love trouble. Number 4. Pete's Dragon the new Pete's Dragon greatly strayed from the original version in terms of tone and is all the better for it. Well, I tell you, magic. While some of us have nostalgia for the original, a lot of it wouldn't translate to modern sensibilities. With a general spirit that evokes family films of old like E.T., the remake is able to create a real sense of wonder and adventure within the story. He knows that the North Star shines brightest of all. He knows that there's magic in the woods, if you know where to look for it. The titular green dragon Elliot was given a peculiarly furry redesign in its transition to CGI, but it ultimately works in the movie's favor, and we grow to care about him and his relationship with Pete. Oh! 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 
It's one of the few Disney remakes that actually improves upon the original, and perhaps by the widest margin in this case. Number 3. Maleficent This might be responsible for the recent surge of villain origin story movies. While the original Sleeping Beauty remains one of the better films of Disney's Silver Age, 2014's Maleficent makes a strong case for becoming the definitive interpretation of this particular fairy tale. Oh dear. What an awkward situation. Going for more of a reimagining than simply telling the same story from a different point of view, the movie makes the title antagonist a much more compelling character, and a tragic one at that. I had wings once, they were stolen from me. That's all I wish to say about it." Angelina Jolie absolutely slays it, suffusing Maleficent with the kind of nuance and screen presence she needs to resonate. Her interpretation is one of the few reasons the sequel, Mistress of Evil, remained at all watchable. Pitchforks. Humans are hilarious. Uh -huh. Number 2. Cinderella of all the titles in the classic library, Cinderella stands out as one that might be the most antiquated in regards to how femininity has evolved. So it's done. Just because it's what's done doesn't mean it's what should be done. We knew going in that Kenneth Branagh's version would provide no end of visual splendor. What surprised us was the maturity in its themes, as well as in the development of its storytelling and characterizations. Why do you do it? Why? Why? Because you are young, and innocent, and good, and I." Lily James and Kate Blanchett give masterclass performances in their respective roles. Playing at polar opposites, they sell audiences on the notion that courage and genuine kindness are two of the greatest virtues a person can have. I forgive you. Suddenly, we can see a whole lot more people wanting to be like Cinderella. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Jungle Book the gold standard for Disney remakes, The Jungle Book exemplifies precisely how to remake a movie in general. It's recognizable in terms of its characters and plot, but adds a series of narrative layers that make it all the more dynamic. Not run away. From who you are. Not only that, but it's polished with some of the best CGI you'll see today. It's so impressive that you'll forget you're watching a movie and simply bask in the glory of the adventure. Do you hear me? I'm done running from you! Though the original film holds up fairly well, this one surpasses it and then some, making director Jon Favreau Disney's golden boy in a big way. In short, The Jungle Book started with the bare necessities and worked its way up to perfection. What's that? That's a song about the good life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.